President Joe Biden has tested positive for COVID-19 for a second time this month, and this comes roughly three days after he was cleared to exit isolation. The White House is calling it a rebound COVID positivity. And joining us now to talk about the reemergence of COVID-19 is epidemiologist Dr. Jonathan Cantor. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Well, first of all, can you just explain what rebound COVID is? Sure, you know, rebound COVID is basically a phenomenon that we can see when people either have COVID or, you know, they have been exposed to COVID and they have been ill and they feel better. They're doing well. They feel like, you know what, I'm getting away from this. Uh, I was treated with Paxlovid or even I wasn't treated with Paxlovid, but they think they're doing better. They even test clear, so their testing is negative. But then a few days later, depending on, you know, who we're seeing this happen in, it ends up kind of clearing up and it ends up coming back. Mm -hmm. So they may get symptoms or they may just test positive again. So the rebound is basically Basically, you didn't have COVID for a while, you weren't testing positive, you felt like you were fine, but hey, wait a second, this infection is back. It's not a new infection, it's really just that old infection that was latent for a little while coming back. Okay, so that's important to know. So when it comes back and, you know, a few days you were out without symptoms, now you've got your symptoms again, are you still contagious if it comes back? Do you yeah. still have to isolate? Yeah, so, you know, that's, that's a critical question is, you know, you've had COVID, you've been treated, you've been on Paxlovid, for example, like President Biden. If you are testing positive with an antigen test, the assumption is that you are indeed contagious. So that is really important to keep in mind. You can't think, listen, I tested negative, so I'm never going to be infectious again. It's important to realize that if you get symptoms again afterwards, or even if you're testing positive with an antigen test, in all likelihood, you do have the potential to spread COVID to others. And how common is, you know, getting COVID again after just a few days of testing negative? Yeah, that's a million dollar question. Uh, you know, a number of studies have been done. The initial study suggested it was very low. It was one or two percent. Uh, a more recent study that's out really in a preprint, so it hasn't been peer reviewed yet, but it used a large number of patients, suggested five or six percent. And what we're seeing in the news media now, of course, suggests it may be even higher. Really prominent people like President Biden, like Dr. Fauci, have had this phenomenon occur. So it may be much more common than we thought previously. And, you know, you talked about Paxlovid and Biden was treated with that drug right after he was initially tested for that. Can you tell us a little bit about that drug, what it does, and, you know, do you anticipate he'll be back on Paxlovid again? Yeah, so that, again, is a really critical, critical point. Uh, we saw with Dr. Fauci, for example, that even though CDC guidance is that you don't start Paxlovid again if you have a rebound case, mm. he actually did because I think he felt that symptomatically he wasn't doing well, that it was worthwhile. Uh, in the case of President Biden, from what I understand, his physicians have said he has a very mild case. He has not restarted Paxlovid. And again, that's consistent with CDC guidance. It's hard to know whether they're going to decide to start him over again. And it's one of those outstanding questions, which is, is our course of Paxlovid, is that five-day course of an antiviral really the ideal, or is it something we need to look into further? Do we need to tweak that time course, or should we just kind of work like what we're doing now, where we say if you're really symptomatic, if you're doing poorly, then of course we consider treating you with more drugs afterwards. It's still something that we're figuring out, testing, and you know, trial and error. Absolutely. You know, the, one of the themes of the pandemic, unfortunately, is that everything's evolving and that there's so much changing science that goes on as we kind of figure out what works best. And of course, now with with the, you know, with the COVID variants that we're seeing with Omicron, it has been particularly challenging to kind of decide what the best way to treat it is. And for those who might have COVID right now and they're considering Paxlovid if they don't know about the option, can you tell us a little bit about that drug specifically, what it does, how you can get it, um, when doctors can issue it? Do you have to be, you know, a certain level of sick in order to receive it? Sure, that's a critical point actually for viewers at home. Uh, you know, I would say that, you know, the guidance right now for Paxlovid is that it is for people who are a little bit older or for people with risk factors mm -hmm. for being very sick. Uh, it is an antiviral medication. It is a combination of two previously approved antiviral drug. So this is not a brand new drug that's being approved for COVID. Mm -hmm. It's a pre-existing drug that is now being approved for a new indication. And that's also important for people to know. So the medications have been studied in the past. It is, pre it is approved for those who are more likely to get very sick. But again, if you are ill, talk to your doctor because this is free. Any doctor can prescribe it. In fact, a lot of places can give it to you if you go to kind of a testing center. They can have somebody there who can prescribe it. So if there's any question, I would say err on the side of certainly taking a medication that can reduce your chance of hospitalization. Well, that is definitely helpful information. And before we go, can you just explain what you've been noticing about the latest strain of the Omicron variant, BA5, and 
how that's really been the one that's kind of affecting most people in the U.S. right now. Yeah, well, you know, BA5 has really taken over. It's really taking over worldwide. Uh, part of it is that it is just so, so, so infectious. So it is so efficient at spreading from person to person to person. And the key thing to understand there is that, you know, this is a efficient virus at transmitting itself. It does not mean that it is worse, however, than the original COVID. If you ask me, I'd much rather have BA5 than the original COVID from a couple of years ago. But again, the other thing to keep in mind is that you are going to get BA5 even if you've been vaccinated, if you're getting exposed repeatedly. If you go bobbing for apples with somebody who has COVID, even if you've had two vaccines plus two boosters, you're going to get BA5. So it's important mm -hmm. to keep in mind that you're not going to be protected necessarily against infection. What you're going to be protected against, though, is hospitalization and death, which is, of course, what we really worry about the most. All right. Well, this is all such wonderful th information. Thank you so much, Dr. Cantor, for joining us this morning.